David Day. I'm the owner of Black Flag United, BFU Motorsports, and this is my History in Motion. My dad was always into muscle cars, his big Mopar or no car. He raced 71 Roadrunner. That was a big deal for me. I always wanted to, to be a part of it. I always wanted to build that car again with him. It didn't get to happen. My part of that, what I took from it, was I need to explode what I'm doing. Much bigger scale, more intense. You know, we're more into the drag racing. We're real serious about it. The reason that I'm so passionate about that sport is because, you know, it's something that my dad was doing. It was just something that he was really enthused about, and it, that's what started me wanting to do the same thing and really you know I was I was really a big muscle car guy you know I didn't I didn't mess with imports at all uh, I blame that on my wife she got me into it and when I realized it was fun you know and I could do it competitively then I went full force into it The technology that we have now is, is wow. Uh, 10, 15 years ago, there was nobody running as fast as these cars are running. There's a lot more adjustability in things. Everything has come a long way. You know, some of the guys don't even race these cars anymore, but it took a lot of guys that are, you know, basically the pioneers of this to go through all the BS and, you know, figure out what worked and what didn't work. There's pioneers of it. Uh, I'm, I'm personal friends with them. It was kind of my thing where I always wanted to be able to compete in the, at the same level with these people. Uh, Tony Palos, he's done a lot of hard work in this business. It's pretty much the reason why I'm doing this. And, you know, I always wanted to, to, be, to be able to compete at his level. You know, uh, uh, Chuck, a uh, sight singer from Street Outlaws. He raced a Honda for years. You know, he doesn't do any more. He still has a car, he doesn't do any more. Uh, he needs to bring it back out, but <laughs> those guys, those guys were, were pioneering this stuff a long time ago. And I think everybody still looks to that level to try to compete. You know, I've got another guy that, that comes in, uh, Israel Gonzalez, that comes in and helps me with tuning. And I've learned a lot from a guy, learned a lot from him when other people would not be willing to because again this is a competitive sport and a lot of people keep their secrets you got to either learn from someone or you have to learn it on your own the hard way when we started uh, really putting full effort into this car the goal was to be the fastest front wheel drive car in our class in Texas you know we went to uh, uh, Baytown Texas uh, our local NS event import face off Noble Tulsa uh, Baton Rouge Louisiana like these are frequent tracks that we we try to race that every year. You know, as long as there's an event there, one of us is going to try to make it. But my personal goal was to be the fastest car at these events, make rounds, uh, win. And uh, for the past two, two and a half years, we have been the fastest car. You know, maybe not now with the uh, with the fastest ET, but at the event, yes, we were the fastest car on the property. Our next goal is. At the event, I want to be the fastest car on the property again, you know, to let everybody know that, hey, I'm not over here sleeping. You know, we, we work in the dark when nobody's paying attention, but I do want to come out and run a seven second pass. That's the goal for me with this car now. If I can get everything to work right, hopefully we'll get that, you know, seven second, 190 mile an hour pass. That would be my next goal. I don't know, a lot of things I learned from my dad. He always told me that he was proud of what I was doing. He never actually got to watch me race at an event. I would have loved for that to happen. I mean, I think that's why, with my personal my personal car, that pushes me. You know, right before you race or whatever, you get in, you do your burnout, you're all strapped in, you're safe. I always pray with my family before, uh, before we race. I feel like that's a, a really important thing. Because you never know what could happen. Uh, I mean, we've almost, we've blown tires, uh, we've blown motors and almost wrecked. Uh, and it, you know, if speeds like that, then you, you have to really think about everything that's going on and uh, not just yourself. You can't, am I okay? But what's, if something happens to me, you know, what's gonna happen afterward? We did have a really good friend of ours pass away racing uh, some years back. His name is Jason Lumpkin. Uh, good friend of mine, always a straight up guy. Looked up to him. That changed a lot of stuff for everybody. Everybody wanted to be a lot more, a lot safer, you know, with the, with the cages and everything. You know, my dad never got to watch me race, uh, so, there's a couple times, you know, him and my mom, I'm like, hey, I hope y'all are watching me. Here we go. I'm sure they're watching me somewhere. Me personally, you know, everything I do, uh, I feel like, you know, they're looking down on me. So, I gotta watch my step, <laughs> you know, keep my word, and uh, try to do my best. <laughs>